Yeah. The rush is on, and DeLone in the end zone lets it go, and it's incomplete. Again, pressure by Memphis on the third down and six. And Southwestern Louisiana is going to have to punt it away. Oh, everybody was in on that play, and Jerome Woods is a happy guy. Look at that big cast on his right hand. that cost him an interception last week. If, you, if, if, if you're third age, you, you're kicking yourself because you got a safety on that play. But the Tigers defense did an outstanding job of keeping Southwest Louisiana on their end of the field, and the Tigers offense is going to get excellent field position. Mike Jones in his own end zone getting set to punt. He's already had one block. This one he gets away, and Ross Kelly has to scamper back. That's a good kick. Back to the 41-yard line. Ross Kelly into southwestern territory at the 48-yard line. A 50-yard punt into the wind. Impressive for Mike Jones, but these guys are happy with this score. 19 nothing. If you're thinking of selling your home, there's one important thing you should know. There are more than 8,000 homes for sale right now in Memphis and Shelby County. And just one little symbol that can keep your home listing from being lost in that crowd. The River Oaks 10K symbol on your for sale sign tells every realtor in the Memphis area that River Oaks offers a $10,000 bonus opportunity if they sell your home faster. And when your house moves faster, so can you. Ask River Oaks about our 10K plan today. I've been chosen by some of my fellow egg farmers to tell you about some special eggs. They're called good news eggs. And they're special because they come from hens we feed an all-natural diet that's low in saturated fat. Now, it seems some people like good news eggs because they come from these specially fed hens, while others seem to like them because they taste so good. All I know is people seem to like them. Produced by Russ Dunn Farms. You're a good egg, Russ Dunn. Memphis will see what they can do with a football in good field position and a 19-0 lead. And Rip Shearer is not one to sit on a lead. And Odin's going right to the air. Odin over the middle, picked off. Right back to southwestern Louisiana and right at midfield. And it didn't take long at all. That interception made by Brent Jackson, the cornerback. Jackson, a very good player, and he shows you why there. He's the returning drop by pass for Bernard Odin. Look like the ball is going to be tipped. An excellent job by Brent Jackson, young man who had two interceptions out last year, and he's the only returning starter in the secondary for the Raging Cage. He was looking for Q, Pittman Spalding, and I don't think he got what he needed on to it. There's the turnover story, and it's sloppy. Not a very good offense to get the game when you look at the turnovers. Well, you really don't want to have that. Your keys were that Southwestern Louisiana have to take advantage. Memphis sure had. Big right. pressure by Jesse Allen. And DeLone's going to lose 10 yards. We said during the, the first couple of games, we hadn't mentioned his name much, but he's ha having a coming out game tonight. And, and excellent pressure. What the Tigers, Tigers are doing, they're pitching their guys on the inside. And 23, he just misses his block. And Jesse Allen gets the quarterback, wraps him up, and do what any good linebacker would do, put the quarterback on the ground. The fullback did not pick up the blitzing linebacker, Allen, his first sack of the year. Oh, boy. And it was a loss of 14. Second down and 24. Boy, this defense. This is the way they played against Michigan. And when you play a team that's not as good as Michigan, you're really going to rack it up. They had 15 total yards in the first quarter. They're going backwards here. Bonner on a blitz tries to put some pressure on. And the pass dropped over the middle. There's the weakness, as you mentioned, in the Memphis defense. They tried to go to the third string quarterback. They play a bunch of folks, Garrett Mayweather. And Mayweather could not hold on. And just, just a little pattern right in the middle and the Tigers are going to have to make some adjustments because the middle of the Tigers defense is wide open. That is the fourth. There's been four sacks tonight by the, the U of M. Which uh, they had two coming into this game. They were both against Michigan. There's that pass over the middle nearly picked off. It was Jerome Woods near the ball again. And so it'll be fourth down and 24, and the Memphis defense has again done the job. Another punting situation, and the Tigers turn the football over, but they hold the Rage occasion on three downs, and now they're in another punting situation. 
Jones in a punt for about the 25th time in this game or so it seems. Again, big pressure. That one nearly knocked away, and they're not calling the flag on the play. Ross Kelly did not call for the fair catch and stays in bounds and gets you an extra four yards. Just sheer courage and hustle. And, uh, Ross Kelly, you really want to get the ball in his hands, and the Tigers really haven't had a need to throw the ball downfield yet, but he's exciting on the punt return. I just, I, I feel happy that I got the chance to see this guy twice, Ross Kelly. Look at how close Memphis see, gets here. That's close right there, and he's diving toward, he might, could have took one more step, and then dove and might have a chance at that one. Joe Boric is into the game. So they say they're going to give Boric some snaps. They do. Quitman Spalding off the left side. And that time there was a bit of room for him to squeeze out three to four. So there's Boric. And you, you, you feel sorry for Joe a little bit. Here's the senior who gave so much to you last year, coming off the bench when you needed him, winning that game at Ole Miss, the first time you win a game in Oxford. And I love his attitude, but frankly, here's a guy who twice this year has lost his starting role. And, and plus, he struggled. And one thing as a veteran quarterback... Yeah, look at his numbers. And his numbers really really reflect that he's really struggling. As a veteran quarterback, you got to be able to make the plays. Orich with the option. There's a flag thrown late. And usually, if the flag is thrown right there, usually going to find a holding call. That was Boob Levins on the carry. We'll see. Yeah, it is. It is a hold. Stop was made by Pat Brennan, linebacker. So instead of second and seven, they'll march it back 10 yards from where the infraction took place and give the Tigers another down as Nelson Stokely has elected to take this. And the Tigers are, 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 caught, uh, are making some crucial penalties and taking themselves out of pretty good field position. Coed's loving the game so far here. Oh, they're really not going to sting back. All the way to the 27-yard line. Tigers have to go to the 45 for a first down. And what, what Joe needs to do is just get some confidence, have a lot of poise, just use the same mechanics that he had last year, and, and that's going to get him back on track. But he has to keep his confidence. Second and 18. And the option is Spalding. Spalding can't find any room there. He got two yards to the 29, and that was all. Stop made by Rick Jackson again, quarterback. Yeah, it's interesting about these defensive backs. Their offensive line is so big, their DBs average about 5'8". They're tiny. They're yeah. tough. And what they're doing, they're coming up on the speed option, on, on, on the read option. What the Tigers are doing, they're faking the dive option and going to the outside, but... The, K, the Raging Cajun are sending the, the secondary. What the Tigers do on the option play, set up an option pass, and that'll, that'll get the Raging Cajun out of that defense. Borch buys himself a little time, fakes it. Borch is going to try to run, and he's forced out of bounds at the 37. There's the flag. He's going to get a first down out of this thing. That's a break. It was Goff who came over, and Goff should have stayed on his feet and not made the hit, and Memphis would be punting, and instead, the Tigers' drive is going to continue. And that, that's the thing you got to look for, Joe. He's got to be smart. He didn't see anything. He started to run, and then they, uh, he was hit out of bounds, so that's going to cause a penalty. So he's going to be very... He faked him out to get himself a couple of more yards, and then he's going to get bumped out right there. And yep. as you can see, he's First out of bounds, so he really helped the team and, and the team yard. not... First making down. a bad pass, but being smart and pulling the ball down and trying to get some yards. R.C. Louder back, the referee. Said cl clearly Marlon Goff. Late hit, personal foul, 15 yards, automatic first down, spotted in southwestern Louisiana territory at their own 49. Four and a half left to go in the first half. It's time to dive straight ahead to the fullback. Doesn't fool anybody, particularly Joseph Evans. Evans, the defensive end on the left side. Levin's got about a yard and a half. That's all. Second down and nine coming. These young fans like what they see. You know, it's a new generation. Morris Sports Marketing did a survey along with, uh, I think, uh, Professor Dick Irwin, Dr. Irwin's 
uh, graduate class on sports and sports marketing, and they found that so many of the season ticket holders were of the older generation. They've hold, held season tickets for over 20 years, and so you're looking for some new folks to really turn on to the game, and uh, hopefully this team and Rip Shearer will do it. That play went absolutely nowhere. It did turn on Jeff Mitchell, the defensive end on the other side. So two plays and two big ones by the defensive ends of southwestern Louisiana since a third down and 12 coming. And really put the tight. Again, there's your speed option. And what you're going to do, you want to take it to the corner. And the Raging Cajun had a defense real well. And Frank Fretcher really doesn't have a chance to go anywhere. and going to set the Tigers up in a, in a passing situation. And they have good success on third down. Three wide receivers and a tight end in on this play. Gorch had the time and went for Spalding and threw behind him. The play was well defended by the linebacker who was wearing Spalding, and Spalding gets up limping. Uh-oh. Q can't make it to the sideline. The junior from Winchester, Tennessee, trying as he can, but he got hurt. It's his right leg. I don't know if it's the knee or the ankle, but usually when you kind of walk in like that, it's the ankle. Yeah, and what they're going to probably do, take a look at it. It doesn't look like it's real serious, but it looks like they'll just have to retape it, take the socks off and retape it, and he'll be back. So hopefully he will. We'll get an update from Matt Dillon on that. In the meantime, Coglin in the punt again. Willie Terrell is back. He calls for the fair catch and lets the ball bounce to 10. It goes to the three. Smith makes a great save, and it's down at the two and a half yard line. Chris Smith made the play for the Tigers. What an athlete. A 48 yard punt, and then the magic of Chris Smith. Watch it. This is just a true athlete who's, who's doing a good job. He's hustling down the field. He couldn't, he couldn't uh, pin the ball, but he knocked it back out the end zone, and Dan Bunn is right there. And for Coughlin, who struggled last week in Michigan, had a couple of shanks, had a couple of poor kicks, but tonight he's having a very good night, and the special teams is playing well. Well, even at Michigan, when he had the bad game, he had the one shank for 11 yards and another punt for 16 yards. He did pin Michigan inside their 20 three times in that game, so he was a bit inconsistent. Tonight he's just been marvelous. This is the second time that the, they've been inside the three-yard line on punts, and this time the guard on the left side, maybe it's the tackle, jumped out too soon. Looks like he'll have procedure on the Raging Cajun. So move that ball from the two and a half to about the one and a quarter and look for a safety because everybody's coming. I got the feeling. Ball and one thing you want to do, you want to keep the offensive, the offensive team on their side of the field. And the Raging Cajun have been on this end of the field all night. First down, officially 11 yards to go. It's spotted just outside the one yard line. You get a good look down there from our field camera. You see the function going on there, too. Pryor tried to get to the left side. Really made a nifty move to get away from the line, but Jesse Allen got a hold and rode him down. Four penalties by USL now for 23 yards. Memphis has six for 48. And one thing for the Tigers, you don't do, you don't want to see all those penalties. And you've seen some crucial holding penalties. Second down and nine. Need a couple on that last play. Play action, and Malone's got some time, and he's going long. Woods is down there. Woods cannot come up with the football, and neither could the intended receiver. Let's go down to Matt. He's got something good for us. Dave, the rain has stopped, and it's also good news for the Tigers. Quick McFaulding came out a minute ago, running along the sideline. He's ready to go for the second half. Nothing serious. Well, that's good. Just a little bit of momentary pain, and they say he can get out there. You know what? I guess we said this at Michigan, but games like this, you just like take an aspirin, tape it to it, and get out there and play. Yeah, and, and plus, this is a crucial game for the Tigers. You want to come out and get a victory. If you start out 0-3, you struggle a little bit, but this is the game that the Tigers really feel that's crucial for them as they move into the middle part of their season. And well, Arkansas next week, and they beat Alabama this week. Holy cow. And South Portions that game, and Arkansas really played an excellent football game. And Okay, Matt, you do the, the Tiger guy. <laughs> we'll hear from Matt Dillon in just a little bit. 
Two minutes, nine seconds left to go in the half. 19 nothing Memphis. A third and nine is coming at the four yard line of southwestern Louisiana. And the Cajuns think that maybe they ought to think about it. We'll keep it here. It's been all University of Memphis so far. No question that everybody's played a part in this victory, and Rip Shearer is going to be so pleased. I think after this game, if this continues, we're talking like this game is over. There's still 30 minutes, actually 32 minutes and 9 seconds to play. Well, with, with the enthusiasm of, of, of the defense and the offense be, being very consistent, I don't think you're going to see the Tigers put, put their guard down. And plus, they want to get the, the victory under their belt. They struggled, struggled in the first two losses. And this is a game that they want, especially being their home opener. So here's third down and nine after the break. The long play action just hurls it away. Well, I don't know if it was the pressure or if the Walm is just hearing footsteps because of pass pressure, but that was not what Nelson Stokely meant when he called that timeout. That was a wasted T.O., although they still have one left, and they're probably not going to get the football back in the first half. Right, but you make a good point. You, you call a timeout, you want to run a good play, and DeLong really couldn't get his feet set, and they put him in another punting situation, and the Tigers will come out in good field position. Ross Kelly standing at the southwestern Louisiana 45. No pressure this time. They've played for the return. So here comes Ross Kelly. There's an alley down the right side. And Ross Kelly will take it down to the 22-yard line. That punt, 31 yards. And Ross Kelly with about a 12-yard return. So that's a net of about 19 yards. That's a great play for Memphis. Exactly. And, and, and what you do, you keep the opposing offense on their part of the field, put them in a punting situation. You block one tonight, and the, the, the punt is going to be conscious of that. So you want to try to get the ball out as clear as possible, but the Tigers get the ball, get a good return, and they're at the 22-yard line, and they can come out of this with a, a touchdown or a field goal. Joe Boric stays in. And uh, we presume that he's just getting some work. There's a great move by Frankie Fletcher. And Fletcher bursts through to the 14-yard line. And a pickup of about seven on the play. Chucky Woodall, the linebacker, made the stop. Actually, they give him nine on the play. They spot it. All the way down to the 12 and a half. And Coach Shrew wanted to give Frankie Fletcher some more time, Chris Reeve and Frank Presley. So he's really trying to get them in a football game. Borich on the keeper that time on the option, picks up the first down, gets it to the 10-yard line. First and, and it's either going to be first to go or first and 10. We'll see exactly where they spot it. It looks like they're going to spot it outside the 10, so Borich will have some room to work with. And Joe calls timeout. A minute seven to go. The Tigers want to be sure that they call the right play and that they're aware that they've got to use time management now with only a minute seven and plus going into halftime if the Tigers can get a touchdown on this play you, you really can start to close the door on this so you're going to the halftime lead with a 26 to nothing league you want to come back don't don't make turnovers be conscious of your penalties and just get this win under your belt so you really want to play smart football and Tigers call a timeout hoping to get a score and not turn the football over crowd on hand it really pretty good considering the weather their first look at this rip shearer edition of the university of memphis tigers and he wanted to bring an exciting part of football to, to memphis and he's done that with offense special teams and defense spalding was in and has come out frankie fletcher is in the game borich again looks back to the staff i don't know if he was looking at sparky woods or Rip Shearer, but now they've got it together. First down and 10, and they spot it at the 11. So he's even got some room to work with the inside if they get it down to the one. Or it's checking off. Orich on the keeper again. Suddenly Joe Orich wants to be an option quarterback. Gets that goal. Down to the uh, seven yard line. That's a pickup of about four. Damian Mason, the strong safety, made the stop. And what the Tigers are doing, they're like they're going, hurry up. 
And they better, because there's only 45 seconds left in the half. This time, Boris better unload it. He does. It's dropped. That's a good play. It stopped the clock, and it was going nowhere. I'll tell you what. Boric saw the blitz coming, made the right two-step drop, and fired the ball. Pressure was uh, being put on by Tim Sensley, and that's a smart move to drop that ball and kill the clock. Really? And because you wouldn't have made any yards, you're you going you, you get really going to lose yardage, and the Tigers really don't want to take themselves out of field goal range. I think it was Chancey Carr who dropped the ball, and I, I think he knew it was catchable. I think that was a heads-up play by him. Light, you're already lighting up that victory cigar? Too early. It's third down and six. Borch has a man open in the flat. He finds him. It's Boo Blevins. Blevins cannot get to the goal line. Could not get to the sideline to get out of bounds. So the clock continues to run. There's 26 seconds left to go. And you've got a fourth down and about two and a half to go. And a, a swing pass to the fullback, and he's got a one-on-one -on -one situation, but it's going to be an excellent job of tackling. But look like this Brent Jackson out of the secondary, the returning starter. He makes a good job of tackling the big fullback. You know, you're up 18, uh, 19 nothing. You almost feel like you, you might as well take the points. You've, you've, you've only got one play, and, and you've just killed your last timeout. So you don't have an extra timeout to call, even if you run and make the first down. Here, I'm thinking... Kick the field goal, you're up 22 zip, you've got a three touchdown lead and a point. So it takes three touchdowns and either a two point conversion in there or a field goal to beat you. I make, I put the onus on them, I take the points right here. It, and, and I think the, they will, the Tigers in that situation really want to stop the clock, but you make an excellent point. You, you don't want to lose points, you want to add, add points. And you're going to halftime with a 22 to nothing lead, and that forces Southwest Louisiana to come out in the, in the third quarter and really to put the ball up in the air because they really haven't been able to establish their running game. They haven't figured out whether they're going to kick this ball or they're going to go for it. And I see now they've made the decision and they're bringing in Drew Paramore, and I think that's the right call. I think Joe Boric was trying to tell him otherwise. There's the. Uh, Majorettes getting ready to do their halftime show. The Golden Girl there in the middle. It's a complete show when you come to a University of Memphis football game. Halftime has been spiced up this year. Everything's been spiced up. All the parties around the Overton Square tailgate deal Friday nights before the game. Weather kind of got that yesterday. And what 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 this, what this home opener will bring will bring more exciting action to the fans of Memphis, and they're going to come want to come out and see this young team play because they're very talented, but they're in the learning stages of a new offense, and you really have to give them time. The defense will be the first to adjust, but you have to give more time for your offense because you got the offensive line, offensive lineman learning a new scheme, and you got the quarterback and the running back who's really got to get get on the same page and really they're going through an adjustment with the number one quarterback being down and Bernard Odom really stepping in and doing a good job. Southwestern Louisiana burned their final timeout. Might as well. They don't carry over. Trying to ice Drew Paramore. Paramore's numbers on the year are one out of three. His only field goal a 26 yarder. He has missed two from within the 40 to 49 range. This one considering the ball is on the four, will be a 21-yard attempt. Always notice the way kickers never stand near the huddle. He's been away from everything. Adam English, the holder. The snapper, Brent Armstrong. And now Paramore will try to even up. It's a fake, fake field goal. They give it to Chris Powers, and he's got it. Oh, my, what a play. We said exciting, and the Tigers are pulling out everything tonight. Hey, Adam English is now one for one for a touchdown. Can you believe it? You can't break that percentage, but an excellent call by the Tigers. Offensive staff, you know, calling timeouts, you think they just want to give some time. To, it's just going to be an inside pitch by your, your wing back. He's going to come back inside. And the good thing, if he was down right here, the Tigers really have a first down, but they make it to the end zone and for a touchdown. Good call by the Tigers coaches. And now Paramore will try the extra point. He's missed one tonight. 25 to nothing Memphis. Make it 26. Two for three 
from the extra point. Adam English, one for one in his career. Who'd have thought it? You know, we knew that Rip would try one special team crazy kind of play, a gadget, once a game, he says. He did two. He tried the onside kick, which darn well could have worked. And now the fake field goal for a touchdown to the backup tight end, the freshman Chris Powers. It comes from Adam English, only a sophomore. We might see that again before their careers are over. And that's probably the reason the kicker was standing away from the huddle, because he didn't want to be involved in the play. But th this is going to make the football exciting for the University of Memphis. You come into your home opener, you're 0-2, you want to make it exciting, and you really want to get a good win. And it's just a, a, a outstanding call by the coaches and a good job of executing by the Tigers special teams. 26 to nothing. Well, reason for celebration around this place. And this team deserves it. It's been a rough start. And they haven't won the home opener in seven years, so this really is uh, get a monkey off the Tigers' back. Not over yet, but you like your chances at this point. I don't think the Tigers are going to lose the enthusiasm for this game. I, th I really think they want to come out and prove to the Memphis community that they are a good football team, they're a competitive football team, and they're going to work hard. So I think the Tigers are going to be consistent in, in this game and keeping the drive that they have right now. It's a short kind of a poochie kick. Terrell has it. Terrell knocked down at the 22-yard line. 12 seconds left to go. You get the feeling Stokely will just run out this first half. Britton Wilkins has been on a couple of plays. Made the stop there. Man, we've seen just a little bit of everything here. There was a flag on that play. I wonder if Memphis lined up offsides again. It comes back by the kicking tee. There's Southwestern Louisiana's crew. They've Got a lot of spirit, but offsides. not much to cheer about. Not tonight. much to cheer about right now. Five it was offsides again. As R.C. Lauterbach fills us in. It's the second time tonight, and you really don't want that call. You want you want to have the enthusiasm on the kickoff ki team, but you don't want penalties. And I believe that's the seven penalties by the Tigers tonight, and you really don't want to have a whole bunch of penalties because this game could, could really be out of hand. This is really a strange kind of game, to be totally honest with you. You, you think about it, the offense has had some bright moments, and there have been a couple of big plays, but you haven't really strung together that great drive that you really want to see a good offensive team make, and yet you're ahead 26 to nothing. Your special teams have been superb, and your defense has been outstanding. But if you were to talk to Coach Shearer, he, he would tell you that he would want an all-around football game from his whole football team. And the offensive line, they're going to come around and they're going to jail, but you want the, the whole phase of your football team to really contribute to the victory. And I see, I think we've seen that in the first half by the Tigers. Morich one for three for three yards. And Adam English one for one for four yards. English with the touchdown. Morich hasn't had one yet this year either. Up man knocks the ball to the 36. Stopped there by Jeff Baysmore. And now Stokely will most likely run this thing out. Six ticks left on the clock in the first half. The band getting set to play for this team because they're pretty pleased with what they've seen. And, and I think what Southwest Louisiana is going to do is going to probably going to take a knee and just get ready for the second half, go in, see what it works, see what won't work, but really they've really, really struggled on the offensive side of the football. Oh, big play up the middle by the fullback. Cotton gets to the 50-yard line. That might be their most productive run from the line of scrimmage before Dan Bonner finally knocked him down. What a first 30 minutes of football for the University of Memphis. They did a little bit of everything, and they have flexed their muscles. 26 to nothing at the break. And uh, I, don't, I don't think there's going to be much of a motivational speech at half by Rip Shearer. The fans like it, and I'm sure he does too. 26 nothing at the break. I want to know what you think. I believe we made our great tasting brown hot dog even better. It's beefier now, juicier, spiced just the way you like it. In fact, I don't think you'll find a better tasting hot dog anywhere. But I want to know what you think. So try our new Brian Juicy Jumbos and give me a call. 
Let me know if you like our new Juicy Jumbos as much as I do. Why is Embassy Suites twice the hotel? First, you get a suite with two big rooms. Evening beverages are on the house, not on the bill. And our cook-to-order breakfast is free of charge. Obviously, this isn't your typical hotel. It's twice the room, twice the comfort, and twice the value.